welcome back to Wallacast, a podcast where we talk about English dubbed anime and the voice actors who work on them. I'm Lauren Salter. I'm Matt Walker, and today's show is the last season simul dub slash simulcast uh, Citrus. <laughs> A much talked about uh, show during that season uh, because of its sort of controversial and unusual content. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, Citrus is a adaptation of a manga by the same name, and it tells the story of a lesbian relationship. It's not one that's completely like just fan servicey jokey. Mm -hmm. It's like this is the central plot of the show. If you want to go see it, it's twelve episodes long. You can find it on Funimation. Go go watch that because we're gonna get into spoilers <laughs> quite quickly. Yes, very quickly. This uh, is my first Yuri anime. Yeah, um, it was animated by Studio Passione, and again, Funimation of course did the dub. So yeah, go watch. Huzzah! <laughs> so from, of course, like we said, from here on, there will be spoilers. Mm -hmm. Anyway, like I said, this is my first Yuri anime. Yeah, there are, I mean, there are many, so... That's true. It's, yeah, one of the very few that I've seen, even still. Um, it's even fewer that are dubbed. Uh, there are there are a good handful that are sub-only, but there are very, very few that are dubbed. It is a big driving reason on why I wanted to watch it. Yeah, me yeah. too. Because you don't see a lot of LGBTQ anime. Hello listeners, Future Matt here. Quick interruption. What you just heard was our normal intro that we recorded earlier for our normal episode. However, after we recorded the full episode, we got two awesome interviews with Margaret McDonald, the voice of Harumi, and Megan Shipman, the voice of Yuzu. So we decided that instead of our normal episode, we're just going to show you or let you hear all of that. We've sort of woven them together because a lot of the questions we asked, we asked both of them, so you don't need to hear us do the same thing twice. So when we swap between the two ladies, you'll hear this sound. Some of you may recognize that as the standard bell sound from almost any school anime you've ever seen. Thought it was very appropriate. All right, I won't take up any more of your time, and we'll get to the interviews. So we wanted to know your thoughts on how Citrus as a whole fits into the realm of the LGBTQ representation in anime. I think it's very important because first off they they don't treat the characters as they as like that they're they're just lesbian by however they are what their orientation is. They also address the fact that there are many people within the the subset of, you know, LGBT that have other problems. May has a number of problems. It is addressed in the show. It is shown how she copes with these and how some of them are not healthy coping mechanisms. And <laughs> yeah. when it, I heard a lot of people talking about it and saying that it was a bad representation of LGBT, but I feel like it honestly is a representation of the struggles that a lot of people have in real life. Do you remember what some of those um, examples were that people were giving? Yeah, so one yeah. person said that it showed that it made it seem like all lesbians were aggressive and assault was okay. And that was never anything that was ever, like, implied within the anime. What they're referring to is in that first episode where Mei forcibly kisses Yuzu. And mm -hmm. I understand, like, where they're coming from because they're right. Assault is never okay. But in May's mind, that is all she has ever really experienced, which is shown in the earlier right. parts mm -hmm. of the episode. So that is what she actually thinks what relationships are. It seems like she doesn't even comprehend that there's any other way. So when Yuzu is saying, I wondering, I'm wonder what kissing is like, in May's mind, it seems like she's actually trying to educate her and being like, it's not as good as you think it's going to be rather than, this is what I want from you, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of people do miss the subtext of that first big scene. Right. Like... Um, but I think that, you know, it, it addresses that there are a lot of people in the LGBT community that have some sort of uh, mental baggage or damage, however you want to refer to it. But that is something that a lot of people have to deal with. There's a reason why mm -hmm. it takes pe it takes people to, you know, come forward and, you know, be courageous. It's considered courageous to come out. And that's because mm -hmm. there is all of this other struggle you will face by being openly out. 
So my thoughts on it are pretty positive. I think everyone that worked on the show, you know, has a pretty positive view on it. In terms of just like representation within the sphere of anime, I think it's possibly at this point one of the best representations I've seen of LGBTQ in an anime. Certainly one of the most visible, I would think. Yes, and one Mm -hmm. of the most visible. It's not, while there are like sexual themes to it, it's not hyper-sexualized with like, you know, naked boobies everywhere (laughs) and unnecessary panty shots and like, you know, drawing large, you know, just like the over-sexualization of it and just like having girls kiss to kiss, (laughs) you know, (laughs) for like the, the male fantasy. I know a lot of people don't enjoy the aspect that they're like stepsisters, and I think, and I, and I, I mean, and I know that's the part where a lot of people are like, eh. <laughs> yeah. but, but at this point, I think it's the best representation. And once you kind of get past that, I think everything else about the series, if you take out that one factor, it becomes a really, really good, great show about this girl, Yuzu, just trying to figure out these feelings she's having and she's starting to realize like maybe I don't like guys maybe I like girls question mark and yeah but yeah that's why I always tell people if you can get over that first little hump of awkwardness with the (laughs) stepsister thing everything else about the show I think is is great and amazing and it it does a really good job of showing someone trying to just figure out their life at that moment and of course with Lots of melodrama because it's anime, so. (laughs) Of course. (laughs) One of my primary emotions watching the show was about consent, because there are a lot of moments in the show that are, I would consider, non-consensual. Right. To put it lightly sometimes. To put it lightly, yeah. (laughs) Um, So when you watched the show and when you were recording it, I mean, you didn't have, your character didn't have you know, much to do with <laughs> consensual stuff. But when well, you were watching the show, what were your... she does have that one scene in the manga cafe, well, yeah. but in uh, yes, her that's mind, true. she's just like, no, I'm just trying to see if people actually bend this way. Come on, stop being an idiot. You know? <laughs> this is true. Yeah. It's for science. For science, guys. Come on. <laughs> so what were your thoughts on, on the non-consensual part? For overall, I was I don't know if I noticed it more because of it seems to be more recent I guess awakening in our social lives um the concept of consent correct it's definitely more overt than it ever was before yeah. well it when citrus first started coming out it was right at you know where everybody was going against you know all of the I guess in the entertainment world there was a huge backlash with consent and people taking advantage of power And it's understandable. Like, you know, so I immediately, when I first saw the first episode, I was a little startled. Of course, anybody is. It's it's a shocking moment. It's supposed to be shocking. And it feels like a very long time. But when I watched it again, what I realized was when that kind of thing happens, it does feel like forever. And I thought that was very accurate to how a someone who is suddenly put into a position that they're not, they don't want to be in, it doesn't matter how short of time it was, it feels like way longer. So I felt like that was what in the anime they were representing, the fact that it might not have been that much time, because in my mind, I feel like it time was almost slowed down right. in that scene, mm-hmm. which is why, because somebody commented like, you know, why is this so long? Like, we already get the point. <laughs> and I'm like, it's because yeah. it's showing you how uncomfortable it is for the victim yeah. rather than the actual timing of anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's nice they didn't really try to rush it and gloss over it, Yeah, that it was given this huge spotlight in time and it, it sort of makes you confront it and makes you think about it. It doesn't give you time to to just move on to another scene and go, oh yeah, that happened, okay, whatever. Correct. It makes you, it forces you to actually think about what is happening in the scene. Um, yeah, it, it makes you be uncomfortable, which I think is good. Audiences sometimes should be uncomfortable. Right. Yeah, absolutely. That's what creates tension and, you know, you can see growth within the show. And that's another thing that I really liked about Citrus, that you saw Yuzu coming to terms with certain aspects. Like, she 
knows that she was, you know, forced in that situation. And she thinks about that. And she also thinks about her forcing her own feelings on May and how that's not okay. And you see the progress that both of these girls who are first, or who are really just learning about what quote unquote real love or attraction is, because you see the struggle with Yuzu debating if she should even tell May or if it just will hurt May in the long run. You know, they, because mm -hmm. she, there's an active point where uh, Yuzu realizes, like, you know, she needs me as a sister right now, not as anything yeah. else. And she holds back on her confession, you know? Yeah, I, that That's was one of the moment. things that I kind of touched on during the episode was that felt very realistic in Yuzu how she did start to understand that especially when you're in a relationship, when you have feelings for someone, like, you have you have desires related to that person, and that person has needs, and those don't necessarily correspond, and they're not necessarily the same thing. Mm -hmm. And what you want might right now might not be what that person needs, and so you kind of have to balance that. What you want out of this versus what they need out of this, and whether you're going to be kind of the bigger person I feel like not. this. I feel like the show really tapped into the difference between desire and love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because... The first couple episodes are heavy, heavy, heavy on desire. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Absolutely. they're also very heavy handed on the struggle that Yuzu faces of she's saying things to herself that when I was younger, since I am pansexual, I had some of the exact thoughts that Yuzu had. Like, why am I like this? You know, mm -hmm. those the mm -hmm. internal dialogue for her was crazy accurate, in my opinion. So I, I think that they really nailed uh, some of those aspects. But I understand somebody coming towards it, reading it, and being like, this isn't an accurate representation because, you know, in the first couple episodes, it is very, you know, aggressive. Mm -hmm. It's one of those, they're trying to keep your attention. And it's just something that, you know, I, th I, I do understand where people are coming from, but I really think they should give the show a full shot to see where it goes but i think it definitely also acknowledges that sometimes people make mistakes and it is up to you how you are going to address them in your life absolutely mm -hmm. yeah i was gonna say i feel like maybe some of the those fr uh not frustrations but you know the people who were saying oh well this is an accurate representation maybe these people haven't been exposed to a lot of lgbt uh, people i don't i've yeah and everyone's experience is going to be different right. it might it might feel even people in that in that in those groups might feel this is a a poor representation because it's not how they felt right but yeah. and and that's totally valid yeah but as you say i think yeah it's definitely worth seeing where it all goes is yeah it I, I can see people getting sort of scared off with the first few episodes. And it really does. I really like how the anime ends in much more of a mutual, respectful way between Mei and Yuzu. Right. You know, there's still that mm -hmm. desire, but it's been, you know, they've had their struggles with it. Uh, and, you know, they've come to almost pull back and start over in that last episode, which I loved. I love that kind of thing. I totally agree. So I think when you get into that, you start looking at May's character a lot. And again, I feel like most people don't look this deep because, I mean, I spent like a billion trillion hours in a booth recording and talking about this show and talking about why characters do what. And <laughs> yeah. so most people I don't think would think about this. So yeah, on the surface, it's like, yeah, that's exactly what it seems like. And the non-consent, no, she's not, this is kind of rapey and <laughs> weird. <laughs> but once you, like, look at May as a character, you realize that May is very much, I don't want to say abused, but she doesn't understand what a healthy, like, loving relationship is mm -hmm. on a lot of fronts. She doesn't understand, like, a healthy relationship with her dad. She doesn't know what that is like, and she doesn't. I mean, and who knows where her mom is? Obviously, mom is either <laughs> dead or somewhere. Who knows? Yeah. She's just like, bye! Classic um, anime parent. Not yeah. present. <laughs> Classic anime parents. They're just gone. <laughs> um, who needs then, them? Yeah. Yeah, who needs them? They're, they're in the way of the story. <laughs> but you get into, like, looking at May, and also, like, in relationships, she's been in this, like, arranged marriage when we first meet her for who knows how long uh, with this weird, creepy uh, teacher. Yeah. Who, oh, yeah. If you, if, and if that's her main, if that's her main, like, 
example of what a relationship is supposed to be. He obviously forces her to like do things she probably deep down doesn't want to do. Mm -hmm. Like, here, come kiss me around at the back of the school. <laughs> like, yeah. that, so it's like, if that's, her, if that's her basic understanding of what a relationship is like, and, you know, she's probably, you know, when we see her kiss Yuzu, she's like, I, I did that to make you shut up. And you start thinking about it and you start thinking about May. If you think about, you know, what happened before we met her with all these little clues left, you're probably like, that probably happened to her. Like she was oh. probably like, blah, 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 blah. And then they were like, shut up. And I'm just going to like use sexual things to make you shut up. Ugh, mm. poor and girl. so, yeah. I, it, it, yeah. And so you start like, we, we talked about this a lot and I, it's, I'm sorry, this like got so dark and oh, awful. No, no, please. <laughs> but, it's okay. but it's really interesting when you look at May's character and you start to realize like maybe these things she does and we all think like, why the hell is she doing this? Yeah. And you start looking like back and you're like, well, maybe it, this is why, like, because she just doesn't know. And this is probably something that happened to her. So she thinks this must be normal because this is how I grew up and this is what I did. And then Yuzu's there to be like, uh, no, <laughs> this is <Yeah>. normal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> But then, you know, Yuzu's also kind of stupid, so <laughs> in her own Yuzu way. <laughs> but yeah, so I think that's, a lot of people talk about consent, but again, a lot of people don't look that yeah. that deeply into it. But once you do, you, you start to realize like, oh, maybe, maybe, maybe that's why. Maybe it's not that they just wanted it to be a little like questionable for like, I don't know, fan service. Because nothing else about this show is fan service-y in my mm -hmm. opinion. Mm -hmm. There's no, I mean, the most you see is like a really cute bra. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like me and me and Kristen McGuire, the director, we'd be like recording and we'd be like, man, that's a really cute bra. <laughs> so <laughs> impractical, but very cute. <laughs> so it's like, that's the worst you ever get. And so it's like, it doesn't make sense for that to be the fan service and the show when there's nothing else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, it becomes more of a like, I don't know. It's it's more of a, a a plot thing, I think, to just kind of show us like what May thinks is normal, and it's not that she doesn't want to ask Yuzu's permission. It's that that's just kind of what she knows. There's she's an awkward human being. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a moment in that first episode when Yuzu sees May being. Uh, I don't want to say kiss, but that's what happens. You know, he kisses her yes. very forcefully. Yes. And she turns yes. and she looks at Yuzu. And that moment to me, was it hit me so hard because for me, that was clearly, this is not something that I want. Where, of course, like you said, Yuzu doesn't see that. And maybe some viewers <laughs> don't either, which kind of scares me. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's kind of like deep down, May, May has become like at this point when we first meet her, it's like she seems very complacent with her life. Ugh. She's like, this is what I'm going to do. This is my life. This is how I'm going to grow up. This is my job when I get older. And when... I mean, Yuzu sees her, and I mean, Yuzu freaks out because one, Yuzu, Yuzu likes to pretend she's hot stuff, mm -hmm. but she doesn't know, she doesn't know nothing. <laughs> and so she's probably, that's probably like the first time she sees someone not on TV kiss. <laughs> and so, and then, you know, you add the fact like, oh my God, it's a teacher kissing a, a student. Mm -hmm. And then Yuzu doesn't know like the, what's going on. I mean, later, I, I can't remember if she finds out before or after that point, like, oh, they're in this like weird arranged marriage thing. I don't think she um, finds out for a, an episode or so, maybe, or yeah, maybe it's or late. maybe yeah. It's either, yeah, it might be like the right at the next episode or something. But yeah, so it's just kind of like this. So not only is it that, but she, Yuzu, Yuzu knows like it's wrong because it's a teacher and a student, and that's weird. But then she's freaking out because she's seeing someone kiss, mm -hmm. and then um, precious, you know, which, and then I think, <laughs> which I don't think some people <laughs> realize if they don't know Japanese culture is incredibly rare. In public. Like, yeah, yeah like, like you, yeah, uh... seeing someone kiss in public would be super shocking. Yeah, that's like the most bizarre thing yeah, ever. You don't do that. Um, yeah, and so then you have May who looks at Yuzu and is, it's like she doesn't seem like, oh no, I got caught. Like she's, she's so calm. She's like, whatever. <sighs> but because I think she's just at this point, she's stuck in that mindset of like, this is my life. Like, I don't care. Like, it's gonna, whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen. And it's gonna happen this way. There's no surprises coming or anything. <laughs> then comes Yuzu, but that's a different story. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, so I, it's sad because you, the more you look at May, the more you realize how, how sad she must be on the inside. But 
she doesn't really say anything because she's like, this is just my life. Womp. And I think mm-hmm. it's safe to say she does not handle that kind of thing well when it's brought to her, like brought out in the forefront. Oh, oh no, she doesn't. She's like, she's, May is so weird. And the what's weird about May is that they'll tell her something like, I don't know, they'll just tell her something like, hey, that's not normal. And she'll be like, She'll just like completely like be like, I don't want to talk to you. Beep mm-hmm. boop. Don't talk to me. <laughs> Do not ruin my life, please. Because again, that's, she probably doesn't want anyone to like ruin it for her mm-hmm. because you know, that's all she knows. And that's scary to her. Everyone's scared of like what they don't know. She's like, Oh my God, if this, if my life gets ruined, I don't know what I'm going to do. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So she has to like always be, do what they want so that, you know, she knows what's going to happen. And yeah, May, May is such a sad, sad person. I hope that yes. I hope people listening to this will sympathize with May a little bit because honestly, I didn't really sympathize with her much until the very end. And then now, as you're talking, it's you know it makes sense. Um, it's it's very hard in the beginning to sympathize with May. Mm-hmm. It's so hard. Even I, even I at the beginning was like, what the heck? But then yeah. you know, and as you said, as you watch the show more, you start to realize things and you know, me, we're just in the booth all the time, just talking about like what's happening, Mm -hmm. why. So like, as we kept talking and delving deeper into it, God, it was so, it's like mind blowing kind of, you're like, man, is this, is this all coincidental or is this just masterfully crafted and written? Like, (laughs) Maybe a little bit of both. Yeah. (laughs) Maybe both. (laughs) But, But yeah, it's so hard to sympathize with her. But, but the more you look at her, the more you start to realize like, oh my God, this, poor, poor girl. Like she doesn't, doesn't know any better. She mm-hmm. honestly does, has no idea or she, and she doesn't want to know because she doesn't want to ruin the expectations she's had in her head forever and ever. It sounds like you're also mm-hmm. describing Yuzu at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's pretty, that's Yuzu too. Yuzu doesn't know anything that's going mm-hmm. on. <laughs> you don't you like those softballs we threw you right out of the bat? Oh, I was ready. <laughs> I was so ready for it. <laughs> um, so we, of course, would be remiss if we didn't talk about your character, at least a bit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, wait, you're in this? <laughs> what? No way! <laughs> so I would admit that, that Harameen is definitely my favorite character, mainly because, and I think the creators were smart to do this, she's sort of the anchor point that we as an audience can connect to and, and can like. Right. Because... It's really hard sometimes to like Mei and even Yuzu. Sometimes it's hard to yeah. to like these people because they are. Let's face it, they're kind of messed up. It's not their fault, but you know they got issues, and it's it's it can be hard to to sort of swallow that. Right, their so, issues uh, are way more apparent than anyone else's in the show. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Although so Matsuri's I, are pretty in your face as yeah, well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ooh, that's a whole other ballgame. Um, but. I just wanted to kind of ask how how was it playing Harumi? I I I personally thought you were perfectly cast for that, and I I love her attitude, both sort of confidence and just sort of positivity. Mm-hmm. Aw, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely I love Harumi. I heard somebody else reviewing the show, and somebody said Margaret McDonald doesn't play Harumi; she is Harumi. <laughs> and... <laughs> That was one I, of the. I, I might have said that. I wouldn't at some say. Point. I wouldn't argue against that. <laughs> yeah, I when I heard that, I was like, I get. Yeah, that was a that was high <laughs> praise. I found. Um, but no, I honestly, uh, Harumin, she is such a strong support for Yuzu because mm-hmm. even when she, for instance, when <clears throat> she doesn't want to hang out with Matsuri, she can tell that she is bad news. But she stays Mm -hmm. with Yuzu the entire time because she's not going to tell Yuzu not to do something. She understands that Yuzu wants to do these things. She's not going to be like, well, don't do that or I'll do this. She's very much like, all right, I'll go with you just to make sure everything's okay. She's she's the friend that would be sitting with you in jail, not the one that would bail (laughs) bail you out, you know? Absolutely. That's that's for sure. (laughs) Yeah. So I feel like... She's she's the friend we all want and need. I actually had a note that like she is the person we all need in our lives. <laughs> she's great. <laughs> she's fabulous. I have a I have a favorite saying, uh, ladies supporting ladies, and Harumi is definitely one of those. Like it's so great. I 
you, we're almost conditioned these days, especially in Western media, to kind of expect that stab in the back, like, oh, well, if you hang out with her, I'm not going to hang out with you. Right. We're, I mean, I feel like we're kind of programmed to accept that now. So seeing someone like Harumi, who just sticks with her, and yeah, she has some snarky comments, but oh, she's she just does. there anyway, you know? Yeah. Because also, also she's not one to hold back, so she's going to say what she wants to say. Oh, yeah. But that kind of support is something that I really think anime has a lot of, yeah. which is why I yeah. fell in love with the medium. And I think sticking with Yuzu is a bigger deal than it might seem on the surface because Yuzu doesn't always treat Harumin mm -hmm. all that respectfully sometimes. Like, she tends <laughs> to ditch her and just... it's It does seem like a one-sided relationship in a lot of aspects, but I like that, that Harumi doesn't hold a grudge against Yuzu, that she understands why. She doesn't assume... She gives Yuzu the benefit of the doubt. She doesn't assume the worst out of her every time. Right. I feel like Harumin is definitely one of those, oh, I know what you're going to do already, so... I've expected this. Mm -hmm. She's like, okay, I guess you're staying here after school. She's like, wait, what? Well, <laughs> aren't you going to go do this? And she's like, oh, that's a good idea. And Harumin's just like, yeah, bye. I'll hang out with you later. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> like, yeah, she, yeah. She's, she's on top she, of it. She's yeah. <laughs> pretty keen instincts, that girl. Yeah. But I think she really is like the balance point of the show mm -hmm. and helps make it a lot more watchable than it would be otherwise. She's, she's just great. Mama yeah. Harumin. So let's talk about right. Yuzu. She mm. is not yeah. exactly a likable character either. Well, she, yeah, she's beginning. kind of yeah. she's kind of weird. Like she, it's either kind of like you you love Yuzu or you hate Yuzu or you're in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> um, I immediately loved Yuzu. I thought she was ridiculous. I was like, man, her style like... for sure is just like, <laughs> whoa, girl, yeah, <laughs> get it. Yeah, she's. I'm like, man, you know what's gonna happen. Like, <laughs> you know that you don't need to wear that to school. <laughs> I'm really glad the persona anyway. she put on, like, at the very beginning wasn't her real personality, because I was like, oh my god, this is going to be really hard to, to watch for 12 episodes. Oh, yeah, because, well, yeah, because you kind of see in the beginning, like, she's always tried to play it cool with her friends, because, mm -hmm. again, I think she really just wants to, she wants to fit in, yep. and, and if all of her friends are out there, like, kissing boys and dating... She also wants to, she doesn't want to be the one girl, you know, that's not doing it. But on the inside, she's like, but I don't actually want to do that. Mm -hmm. So I have to make up stories to tell them. So that's like the first thing you find out about her. And um, you can't really falter for wanting to fit in. I mean, everybody wants to fit in when they're, <laughs> when they're a teenager. And you, cause you're like, this is the, these are the only people I, I see every day of my life. So if I don't fit in here, I'm screwed. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't even think Yuzu probably even knows or has even confronted any feelings. She's just like, I just think she's just never found a way to date or doesn't mm -hmm. find anyone. She hasn't connected with anyone on that level. Like, oh, I want to date this person. Otherwise, I think she would have. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, because obviously mm -hmm. once she finds May, she's <laughs> like, I need to be with <laughs> yep, you yeah. and keep you and hold your hand <laughs> like all the time. She is all over that. <laughs> Yeah, so it's like, I don't think it's not that she doesn't want to, it's just that she never found that person. And then mm. once she finds May, she's like, then she has to not only confront, like, this is the first person I've ever felt this way about, but it's also a girl, and I'm a girl, and that's not, you know, culturally <laughs> normal right now. Like, what, what's happening? And so she's just kind of hit with this double whammy of, whoa, like, what is going on in my brain and my body? <laughs> like, she just, it's... It's a very unfortunate timing for her, but she, she has to figure it out some, one day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's the other thing that kind of is like, is kind of lovable about Yuzu is like, she's, she makes mistakes mm -hmm. because I mean, she's never like, yes, she makes some very mature decisions and realizing like, Hey, I need to like back off of May for a minute because she needs to be with her dad right now, or she needs to be focusing on this right now. But then at times she also just has those moments where she's like, I want to be selfish and I, I need this. Mm -hmm. And, and neither one of them are very good at like, <laughs> giving and taking. So they just, they, they fumble around a lot before they figure out like what their, I don't know, their love language is, I yeah. guess, because they both just kind of were like full, they just create so many misunderstandings mm -hmm. and, and weird situations, which I feel like that's also a very real thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, in life, I mean, think people don't always just like click 
met right away. And you kind of have to like, you're like, I like you, but I got to figure you out because you do these things that are weird and, <laughs> yep. you know, and you'll do things that make the other person upset and you don't know why. And so, yeah, it's, the show was, I thought was so great it was because it's probably the most real relationship I've seen portrayed, you know, except for the whole stepsister thing. But <laughs> it's like the most real relationship I've seen in, in an anime in, for, in like forever because they're not perfect. Neither one of them are perfect. Even with all the other like nonsense going on, <laughs> it was at its core, it's a very like real relationship, which, you know, you don't see very much. And, and it's surprising that it was coming from this show mm -hmm. that a lot of people just kind of wrote off as like, oh, this is just a sister kissy show, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so that's why I'm always like, give it a chance. Yeah, that's why we wanted to do this old, show. Old, old, old enough question mark. <laughs> <laughs> This is kind of a question that I tend to ask like lots of people because I actually do have directorial experience, not for voice acting, of course, but for live theater. Mm -hmm. So my question is kind of how how is it working with with Kristen McGuire? Oh, um, I had a great time working with Kristen. Yeah, you know she is. First off, she treated this show with so much respect. Because mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of people, when it was first announced, they were like, oh, I guess they're just going to turn it into this kind of show or this kind of show. And I felt like she didn't dismiss the topics involved. And mm -hmm. I feel like she she put her whole heart and soul into looking, looking, really looking into everything coming together nicely. She made sure she had a cast that was passionate about it and you know really respected what they were doing um and you can you can tell mm -hmm. it's oh yeah it's, definitely it's something that you can see plainly that the script writer and the director you could tell they were all really working together to make this the best that they could and honestly i think it's very well done and hats off because casting is very hard i also felt oh, yeah. so comfortable in the booth um, when Kristen was there and, you know, directing me, she was great. Now, I'm curious, did you audition for this role or were you approached for this role? I auditioned. I auditioned nice. for, you know, they give you the book and they have a number of characters you can choose. And I chose, you know, a couple girls and, and Harumin. And I had a blast as Harumin. It shows. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it, it really does shine through that, you know, your excitement and your enthusiasm for her. I mean, I just think she's... She's she's super. I wish I had a friend like her. <laughs> he, he's Me super. Too. Thanks for asking. <laughs> for me, working with Kristen was like really really fun because we both we both started doing acting at Funimation around the same time. Mm. And we've kind of like become, <laughs> you know, friends over the years. Mm -hmm. So, you know, <laughs> there was some there were some days, I think, just because we were we were friends. And so it was very like, first of all, it was always really laid back. I never felt like, you know, crazy or weird or anything. Um, and we also had a really like chill sound engineer. His name's Ricky. He's awesome. And Shout he out was to really Ricky. chill yeah. too. Shout out to the engineers. Shout out to Ricky. He's awesome. We love Ricky. <laughs> um, but so first of all, every session was really laid back and chill. And there was always, I always was, we were always laughing because <laughs> we're just always cracking up. Um, cause we just talk about random stuff cause we're <laughs> friends and because we were friends and I felt really comfortable, I would make the jokes that I would normally make. Like if I was watching a show <laughs> with my friends <laughs> and so we were always cracking up and there were, albeit some, sometimes we talked a little too much and didn't get enough done, but we always made up for it. It's fine. Um, <laughs> hey, the show came out, so yeah, exactly. I think it worked out pretty well. The show came yeah. out on time, and that's all that matters. <laughs> so it was really fun. She was, she's really, really smart. And I think she was, honestly, I think she was the best person that could have gotten this show because honestly, she, every show she directs, she gives it like so much attention and respect and like dedication because I mean it's so easy to just go get a show get assigned a show to direct you're like you're getting you know this show and then just be like oh, okay whatever and then like do the bare minimum be like okay here's the plot here's the characters she was like crazy into it and she does this with like every show I've noticed because you know she, she did gamers and she kind of did oh, she like half 
half and half with uh, Sunny with, I can't ever say it right, Figakire. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> Something about the moon. Yeah. The moon. Yeah, that <laughs> one. The moon is so pretty. Yeah. That is a yeah. cute anime. Um, in every show she does, she gives it so much attention. Like, she bought all the manga volumes that she could. Um, so she knew what was going on. She knew, like, the hows, the whys, <laughs> everything, you know. She didn't be like, oh, I wonder why this person. And, well, and, and again, with this show, she kind of got lucky because you know there's some shows where you just go in blind right. and mm-hmm. you don't really know anything right. this show had a lot of like material to go yeah. off mm-hmm. of and so it made it that much easier for us to make it a better show whereas if you kind of go in blind you're like i think they i think they're they're sad but they're not <laughs> really sad you know yeah, yeah. like you're trying to guess and then you don't know the, the whole arc later. of the character yeah. so it's like what yeah, if you yeah. start so going she, this way and there's a it really turns out to be something <laughs> else yeah, exactly. And then you're like, oops. You're like, guess we're, guess we're going to go back and fix that. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I trusted Kristen because she's super smart and she's she knows what she's doing. And we just, we had a good time. It was great. It was super fun. I loved it. Oh, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. So obviously we know you and we love you from all your roles uh in sentai filmworks dubs hey um, Woo, sentai! but of course this is a funimation show and you also have a big role in death march how has it been working for funimation is there any like particular differences in the companies there's always differences between any company that you work for um especially in recording processes and how like they different companies do different things different engineers do different things so it mm-hmm. it's usually different across the board even within companies, like depending on which director you're working with. But, you know, I feel like both of them are absolutely, Uh like both companies are great. And I feel like I very much enjoyed working with Funimation as well. And I feel like I just felt so welcome there. It was my first time being there. So like really, I had worked like in Walla sessions, but it was my first time solo in the booth there. Mm. And I enjoyed being able to like really watch the scenes before going in and, you know, Mm -hmm. matching the lip flaps. And I was able to have some time to think, which isn't always good because sometimes I overthink. But whenever Mm -hmm. I was doing that, Kristen would be like, hey, cut it out, man. (laughs) And I'd be like, oh, okay, sorry. That's good. Good director there. Yeah. (laughs) Well, that's great. We definitely hope we hear you in many, many more shows from them. Yeah, it's always fun. Fun seeing your name. I think. You were a mi- I you know I'm pretty new to anime myself. Um, I, well, I say I'm pretty new. I guess Matt doesn't think so anymore. He's gonna be saying that for years. I am. It's true because <laughs> it feels like it is. Okay. Decade later, I'm pretty new, you guys. <laughs> well, whenever you meet somebody who's been like into anime, like even like a year longer than you, you're like, oh, sensei, teach me your ways. It's, you know. Yes. Yes. <laughs> everything. Yeah, I suppose that's still true. <laughs> Always. But correct correct me if I'm wrong, Matt. But my first Margaret McDonald show was Girls in Punzer. I'm pretty sure that's true. I think. It's either that or Chinibio. Oh, it could have been Chinibio. I, I was, yeah, <laughs> hey That was a pretty good one. Uh, so it's always fun to see um, to see your name in these, because I haven't seen many shows with you yet. So I'm always, I'm always excited. Oh, yeah. I, <laughs> those shows are great. I, I absolutely adore any role that I'm in, because I just love the work and the medium. Because so many things have to go right for it all to, <laughs> to fit together. So I always love those kind of situations. <laughs> Sounds like it's good for somebody with perfectionist mentality like me. (laughs) Yeah. You're really able to, you know, get the right takes and put everything together. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, it definitely sounds like, I mean, the show sounds great. Uh, The casting was, you know, wonderful. We definitely, I enjoyed it a lot. Um, I had, we had, it was one of the more divisive anime that I've seen, I guess. Much there was mm-hmm. a lot of uncomfortableness in it, but I don't always like just having a you know a happy go lucky show. So this kind mm-hmm. of I think Citrus is going to be one of those shows where uh, people should put it into their repertoire at least to shake things up and you know get a different perspective, get maybe a darker side of a relationship. Yeah, definitely. It's 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 one of the more real relationships. It's not all like happy go lucky dates and whatever and. You know, it's it's all really interesting and 
it's just very real and it's not like fairy tale mm-hmm. romance, yeah, exactly. which is what, it's what Yuzu wanted. It's not <laughs> right. what she got. So. It, it is what you get, with, especially with anime, I feel like 99 times out of 100. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> for better or for worse. And, and I even love, you know, not to spoil anything, I love the whole arc with the, at the very end with the twins. And because that, that also showed like another really real side of like relationships, mm-hmm. how like, you might be friends with someone, but you both like the same person and someone might have to just say, you know what, I'm not going to, you know, touch it, you know, mm-hmm. whatever. You know, that was also like a really, really cool. That was probably one of my favorite things, even though it was kind of done really quickly because yeah. we were getting to the end of the show. Um, it was still just like, oh, wow, this is also a thing that happens. And this is a really relatable thing that people, you know, can can relate to and and Mm -hmm. because i'm sure like tons of people go through that that you know and have been in either yuzu's shoes or um or sarah's shoes that would have been a a little storyline that i would have liked to see more developed again it was one of those i could have used like four more episodes of that just that exploration of oh there's another you know i'm not a big fan of throwing another love interest in the mix just to shake it up but i think they approach sarah's relationship with so yeah, that was a lot better than Matsuri. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I yeah. feel like they could have. I feel like they could have flip flopped the time allotment mm-hmm. with Matsuri yeah. and the twins. Like, I feel like they could have shortened Matsuri's time arc a little bit more, or not time arc, but her little, yeah. her little, you know, her little arc, her story mm-hmm. arc a little more, and then spent more time with the twins and like developing that. Like, I like this person, and and then you know, but it's still it still got its point across in a in a good way. They they managed what time they had really well i thought Mm -hmm. and i just wish they'd kind of flip-flopped it and given that little bit more time yeah Yeah, that i think that would have been good there's a lot more substance to the twins than i feel like matsuri sorry matsuri but (laughs) i can only take so much crazy matsuri matsuri is also just another she's another like you're like okay you are another (laughs) complex person that i can't even begin to yeah it's like oh you're still working on me right now like yeah another another girl with like some serious (laughs) issues Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. she's she's crazy (laughs) but city is something else well i had another heavy question but i am not really wanting to ask it anymore Oh, there you go. let's see. Oh, <laughs> peaked interest. Well, I was going to ask you about the incestual part. I should have asked it in the beginning when we were in the heavy. Oh, I can still yes. address this. Um, yeah, go for it. I won't even give you context. <laughs> right. Okay. So first off, I understand that they are stepsisters, but they are not directly related. And I get- Matt and I just air <laughs> high-fived. <Yeah. laughs> we're like, thank you. They're not related. They aren't. I get that they are now, like, family, but genetically, they didn't grow up together. They don't know each other. Yeah, exactly. And they... They didn't live together? Yeah, yeah, for me, it's like, it's even more so than the blood is they didn't grow up together. They weren't kids together. Yeah. Like, they don't... They never grew up as... I, I don't see how people are kind of... Been out of shape. Right. Like, I, I understand, yeah. but I really think... One of the key points of the show and what makes it interesting is that they are forced to live together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And with their it's... feelings, not just because, yeah. Yeah, yeah so... but they also have this this obstacle in the way. And second off, the number of shows in in Japan, in Japanese anime, <laughs> that talk about cousins getting married. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure, like, culturally what is, because they always seem to be like some of the older shows that really address that. I haven't seen many newer shows where the cousins are like thinking about, you know, getting married or whatever. But I know I I don't yeah, think you I mean be, cousins as in Sailor Moon. I guess beyond like a <laughs> yeah. I guess beyond a crush you don't see that too often. Right. That's true. Um Yeah, it it is a it's a weird it's a weird Matt thing over touched there. on that. Yeah, Matt touched on that when we were recording the episode about a little more of the older society of Japan and how Yeah, I was kind of mentioning how their sort of feudalism which sort of condoned sort of marrying within the family ended so much sooner than the Wests did. Right. That I think part of that is that this is just a thing that is sort of a holdover. And and then there's also a lot less of like the sort of religious stigma that I think surrounds that in our culture as well. There's a number of things that are just so different between our cultures that like it just doesn't translate. 
So yeah, and sometimes like, it's easy to forget that one that of this the isn't... things that pops into my head when I think of like you know the cousin thing, like literally an elven lead, like that's an adult show anyway. <laughs> but like, <laughs> yeah, like the girl obviously likes the boy cousin, mm -hmm. and like and like I I know they didn't grow up together, but they knew they were family like the whole time. So it's one of those yeah. like I straight up see that as more incestuous than yeah two girls oh yeah who whose parents more. married each other so because yeah. a lot of people were like oh i can't believe this incest stuff and i'm like guys it's legit yeah i mean it's it's not really play, it's, look at sort of online too don't be you too know, yeah. they those cousins grew up together as well and that's a thing yeah but not a lot of people you know there was so much more uproar about this one than that it's, it seems that way yeah <laughs> yeah well that's true it does seem from my perspective yeah I just kind of don't get the the incest complaint considering they aren't related like at all. That's the big that's the big thing. Everyone's like, "No." I think in my mind when I was like recording, you know, as Yuzu, I I think I stopped classifying them as like incest. I never I never really saw it as incest because honestly, they literally meet that very day it's almost like two people that meet they just i feel like they just wanted to make things dramatic and so they were like how can we make this more dramatic for the story oh i know we'll make it like parent trap where their parents get married <laughs> <That> <laughs> i know a lot of people can sit there and there's two ways you can take it you can see it from the outside without really looking at it deeper and you can see it as oh this is just somebody that wanted to write a story about two sisters mm -hmm. kissing Mm. Yeah, but once you actually like watch it and get into it, you realize like, oh, that's not really what it's about. These girls like literally just met, and I feel like, in my personal opinion, I feel like it's almost the sister quote sister thing is like some kind of plot device. They were like, we want to make this really dramatic, that's, and that's exactly that's how exact, it, that's, that's exactly that's how it feels like, to me that it's just yeah. sort of added to. To, to increase the drama, to increase the hype and the and the, the talk about the show, which, hey, I, that totally works. As if there's not <laughs> yes, enough does. drama in two people falling in love. <laughs> well. I know, yeah, let's, let's make them live together and kind of be <laughs> sisters. <laughs> Everyone falls in love. This is different. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta make it different, guys. Exactly. <laughs> Why don't you tell our followers where they can find you and follow your work. Uh, well, you guys can, of course, follow me on Twitter, uh, Margaret McD underscore VA. Uh, and then you can also find me on Facebook, um, Margaret McDonald voice actor. And I will also be at Delta HCon in Houston in July. Nice. nice. Uh, well, can you let our f listeners, I keep saying followers and I or it's, viewers because I just keep thinking that people can watch it. We're on the Unlocked <laughs> app, so I'm always like, oh, just go watch our, no, go listen to our really stream. Watch. No, no. <laughs> um, can you let our viewers, listeners know where they can find you and follow your work? Yes. Yeah, so um, if you want to like follow me on social media, uh, I am usually on Twitter the most. So if you're going to follow me anywhere, you might as well follow me on Twitter <laughs> because I'm always there posting about you know, stupid things. <laughs> I just posted my giant wall of um, nerdy things because we moved. Yeah, uh, and it does that's look I've great. been reorganizing. <laughs> I hung up all my Eda bags and I have been wanting to do that for so long. They're gorgeous. But anyways, I'm, I'm getting distracted um, <laughs> <laughs> talking about all my, my favorite things here. But I'm on Twitter at 18 Mop Top. I know it's a silly name, but it'll also say Megan Shipman in like big bold letters. <laughs> You know, back when you back when you make usernames when you're in high school and you're like, I'll never use this. And then you kind of become kind of popular and you're like, oh, crap, man. <laughs> and I even asked people at one time if they wanted me to change it. And they're like, no, keep it the same. And I was like, guys, why? <laughs> why are you doing this to me? People don't like change. You're stuck so we, with it now. We had, a, we had our chance, but uh, it, it's passed. So that's what we're stuck with now. So... <laughs> But that's, I'm on there, on Twitter. I'm always there. I sound so menacing. Um, <laughs> She's um, always, always watching. watching. I'm always watching. Um, 
I'm also on Instagram. I like to, I like to cosplay and stuff. I'm a huge nerd. I don't post as much just because I've been, I've been so busy. I haven't really, I've also been getting ready for a convention. So like, I don't really have any pictures to post, but if you like Instagram, I am there as a Irie cosplay, A-I-R-I cosplay. And then, um, let's see what else you can also find me on YouTube. I do I sing the beautiful songs that you like to hear in the anime, but I do it in English. You know, like everybody else is doing these days. <laughs> it, it, and, is, uh, <laughs> it is a big trend now. It feels like all of a sudden they seem to be yeah, everywhere. I, what's funny? What's funny is like I started back like in college doing this. This was that's probably like what? Oh God, I'm gonna feel really old. You know, how you're like, oh, I graduated school yesterday, and you're like, oh God, it's been ten years. Yeah, um, nope, <laughs> yep, probably like I don't know what, for us. I don't know what you're talking about at all. <laughs> ten years ago. What? <laughs> no? <laughs> um, moving on but uh but yeah so like i and then i like stopped doing it because i became a teacher and then i quit being a teacher because it sucked and so <laughs> and so then i was Shout like out to I, the need teachers. Fun. I need something fun to make my life happy again so then i started doing it again and now here we are but yeah you can you can find all that cool stuff uh again it's just mop top or 18 mop top whatever you search on youtube it'll pop up there's a there's a there's a purple haired mascot girl <laughs> with a bright yellow dress. You'll find her. Purple's my favorite color. You'll find her. And um, also on the Unlocked. Yeah, and on Unlocked, too. I'm there. I, I had to go live the other day to tell people I was still alive. <laughs> um, it's been a while. I Every Monday, I do a show about uh, uh, card captors. We've been basically kind of like a book club thing because um, I love card captors so much. It's one of my favorite things ever. It just makes me feel good and happy and pure. <laughs> and... I've been doing a show every Monday where we've been reading through um, a book at a time and I left people hanging on the last book oh, because no. life this month has been so busy. Like I've read it. I have my notes ready to go, but it's like something always happens on Mondays <laughs> now. And I'm like, man, come on, give me a break. So after we kind of get unpacked where we are now, I told everyone the other day, I was like, it's coming. We're going to, we're going to do it. I, I swear to God, we're going to do it. Uh, and they were all like, yay, you're, you're not dead. <laughs> I was like, I'm so sorry. It's the last book too. So like everybody oh wants boy. to know what happened and stuff. Yeah. I really know how to leave them hanging. It's <laughs> like the cliffhanger of all cliffhangers. Right. I know it's, it's the worst. Um, but yeah, so I'm on unlocked and you can go there. I always, and if you follow me on Twitter, I always uh, share when I'm going live and I post a link. So that's the easiest way. If you're like, I don't want to go looking over on unlock. <laughs> Um, you can just wait till I post a link to it or you can scroll through my tweets and find a link to it and it'll, you click it and then you'll just follow me. It's so there easy. Yep, that's great. Cool. All right. Well, thank, thank you, you so much, much for uh, talking with us today. Yeah, no problem. It was fun. I like talking about citrus. It's so awesome. good. Okay, folks. Thank you all for listening. I hope you enjoyed those two interviews with Megan Shipman and Margaret McDonald. A big, big thank you to both of them. If you want to follow us, we're on Twitter, we're on the Facebooks, we have our own well website, just search Wallacast, you will totally find us. As always, a big thank you to Bryce and David at Unlocked, we really appreciate their support. That's pretty much all I got. Again, thank you to Margaret McDonald, thank you to Megan Shipman for talking to us today, it was really wonderful getting to hear their responses of the show. Okay, peace everybody, and in honor of this show, have a very gay day. Oh, my God, I'm